if you look at this thing, it's tiny. It weighs, I think, 1,500 pounds. The capacities aren't super high. What can this thing do? Uh, they have them at the Home Depot, so I rented one. I'm thinking about purchasing one, but I have a lot of reservations on how actually useful a tiny little tractor like this could be. This is the BX23S, comes with the backhoe on the back. The backhoe is ridiculously small. I don't know how useful it would be. Um, it does offer a nice ballast weight in the back. We're gonna put this thing through its paces. We're gonna do some, some things. We're gonna push this thing right to the limit. I've got a couple of things in mind. Uh, one, we're gonna do a little rut maintenance on a steep slope on the gravel driveway, see if we can smooth that out a bit. But more importantly, we're gonna dig this big dirt bank, make a little path. I got a bunch of maple logs stacked back there. We're gonna try to make a path. Uh, I don't have forks, but we're gonna chain, we're gonna try, and we're gonna attempt to chain one of the logs, one of the big maple logs onto the bucket, see if we can lift it and kind of move it around. I have a wood mill that I would like to, I need a way to get the logs onto the mill and then move all the lumber to the other side of the property. Let's figure out if this tiny, tiny little tractor is a complete piece of garbage or if it's actually some good value and you can get a lot of work done on if you have some property yourself. Yeah, we're gonna figure this thing out today one way or another. So I've been driving the tractor around for four hours. I have some very definite interesting thoughts about whether this thing is a piece of crap. To be honest with you, it's a little better than what I expected. It was very stable. I turned it the very steep part of the driveway there. It's 20 degrees and I was sideways on there. I got out of the tractor I tried to see if it would rock a little bit off the side tire, but it didn't feel too bad. That is the one really nice thing about this subcompact tractor. If you're going to be working on hills and slopes, I was able to do like a really nice job grading the top of the driveway here that had a bunch of potholes. I was able to break up the ground by tilting the blade and just kind of dragging it back. The float function here is really handy for driveways. You just kind of, you can get the blade, uh, the bucket, various angles, stick it into float, back drag, and then even forward, if you curl the bucket all the way up, I was floating forward, and that was actually smoothing things out really nicely as well. Scooping material with the shovel, I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't overpowering anything, but I was doing a job. I was getting full scoops, spreading it out over the driveway. In the future, if you got like a load of gravel and then you wanted to spread it down the driveway, you could definitely do that with this tractor. It's probably gonna take all day, but it can do the job. When it came to lifting up the logs, I got them chained up. That was a, a huge ordeal. I'm, I eventually got it kind of chained up and it was lifting the big, it was probably about a nine foot, 16 inch diameter maple log. It was lifting it, no problem. I didn't even have to get the RPM all the way up. So I think it would be very, if I got some forks for it, very handy in terms of lifting up logs, putting it onto the mill, and then carrying lumber around. It's pretty capable for a little tractor. It moved the dirt pile, that went pretty good. Yeah, the multifunctionality of the hydraulics on this machine are pretty awesome. Uh, that's the one thing with the John Deere, John Deere 1025R, the one series. You can't really multifunction in terms of like lifting the bucket and dumping it at the same time. On this machine here, you just come into the, the corner on the stick. When it comes to the backhoe, the backhoe is pretty Mickey Mouse. If I was going to get this tractor, I think I would get one without the backhoe. They make one that's slightly bigger. It's the BX2680. It's got three and a half more horsepower. I think that extra horsepower would come in very handy when you're dealing with a steep driveway. When I was back dragging up the driveway, it didn't really love it. It was doing it. It was going pretty slow and you could, a couple times it kind of lugged out a little bit. I had the RPMs all the way cranked up. We're jumping ahead to the future here. It's been a couple days since I tested out the Kubota. I've gone back to the John Deere dealership, hopped back on the 1025R. Drove it around a bunch, used the bucket, back scrape with it, did a bunch of things on there. I think I'm 99% sure I'm gonna get the John Deere. Here are the reasons why. The number one reason is just you get a, about 200 pounds more capacity with the loader, which is gonna come in very handy for the things that I'm gonna be doing with the machine. With the Kubota, I was struggling to pick up full buckets of gravel. 
to break it out, you kind of had to curl back and kind of even drive back a little bit to get that loader bro broken out of the dirt. With the John Deere, I don't think that's going to be an issue. It has quite a bit more breakout force and capacity. You throw the forks on there. There's a particular video with Tractor Time with Tim where he's picking up things with forks and the uh, John Deere has about 250 to 300 pounds more lifting capacity. The John Deere just sitting on it, it feels better. The seat is a little nicer. The arm rests. Everything about it is just slightly nicer than the Kubota. I prefer the pedals, the side-by-side -side pedals where you're just pivoting your heel to go forward and reverse rather than the treadle pedal. The treadle pedal was fine, but my leg was getting tired after driving it for four hours. And then the final reason, it's, it shouldn't be a big issue, but I don't know, it just the, the Kubota dealership and the salesman that I was dealing with there just wasn't nearly as good as the experience with dealing with John Deere. The guy at John Deere, shout out to Jordan, Prairie Coast Equipment. And the dealership, the John Deere dealership, is considerably closer to where I live, so that's a nice factor. The Kubota dealership's in another town. It's not that far away, but yeah, could be a bit of an issue there. That being said, if you want to see what tractor I ultimately end up getting, think about punching this guy in the face right over here, subscribing to the channel. If you have a home, I've got a bunch of videos on there on how to fix things up, door problems, baseboards, caulking. Thanks for watching.